Do you want to lose your excess body weight, but you are not sure how to do so? In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything about cutting that you will need to know. Starting from what cutting even is, to what types of cutting you can choose from, or how long you should cut for, and much more. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you some useful tips and tricks that will make your cutting journey way easier. So what even is cutting? Cutting means that you decrease the calories you consume below your maintenance calories with the goal of losing fat and preserving as much muscle mass as possible. There are two types of weight loss that you can choose from. First one is the slow, long-term weight loss, which will usually last several months. With this approach, you should lose around 0.5 to 1 pound of body weight per week. By losing your weight slowly, you will most likely preserve most of your muscle while dieting. The other type of cutting that you can choose is so-called mini-cut. As the name suggests, it usually takes from like 4 to 8 weeks and is more aggressive than a slow cut. This is definitely not a long term solution. It should be used as a tool to get rid of a couple of pounds and then switching to maintenance when you reach your goal. The goal has to be realistic and sustainable though. You simply can't expect to super crash your diet and lose a bunch of weight and then just stay there like it's no big deal. It sadly doesn't work like that. Now you might be wondering, how long should your cut be? This depends on your end goal and what type of cut you are doing. So set a realistic goal and try to get to it. Generally, the slower, the better. And the other thing is, what to do when you stop losing weight even when you are still in the same calorie deficit as before. This is very common, because you weigh less, your body needs less calories to maintain your current body weight. That's why you will have to decrease your calories over the time even more. And the next reason being that your need decreased. NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, which is basically the stuff that you do on a daily basis without even thinking about it. Like fidgeting and other movements like that. When you are in a calorie deficit, your body will try to preserve as much energy as possible. That's why you will subconsciously stop fidgeting and generally become a little lazier. These calories that you burned previously from NEAT could have been the difference maker between losing the weight and just being in a maintenance. So you should always keep this in mind. Now let's talk about some common mistakes. First mistake I see people do most of the time is cutting their calories way too drastically right at the start of their cut. And then they have no more room to decrease the calories later, when they hit a plateau. You should not be losing more than 1% of your body weight per week. If you are, it probably means that your calorie deficit is too big. You should be in a calorie deficit of roughly 250 to 500 calories per day. The next mistake that is very common is not tracking your calories properly or just not tracking at all. You should always be tracking your calories when you are cutting. This is especially true if you have never tracked your diet in your life. When you get more experienced, you will be able to roughly estimate how many calories is in food that you are about to eat, even without counting the calories. But even people who are experienced and can basically eyeball it are still tracking their calories. Now let me tell you what to do when you mentally feel like you can't continue your weight loss journey anymore. After you have dieted for a good amount of time and you feel like you can't really keep it up for much longer, because you just feel completely out of it, it's time to switch to maintenance for a couple of weeks. By doing this you can mentally reset, eat some more food for a bit and then you can get ready to continue your cut. It's also a great opportunity to recalculate your maintenance calories, to make sure that you won't be stuck in the future. The next question that a lot of people have is, do I need to do cardio when cutting? Well, you don't have to do cardio to lose weight, as it's just calories in and calories out, but I would highly recommend you to do so, as it provides a lot of benefits. When you are doing your standard cardio session, on like a treadmill or something, you are not burning that many calories. So you shouldn't rely on cardio to be the difference maker in your calorie deficit. It's much easier to cut out a little bit more food than to try to out cardio a bad diet. You might have seen those videos where people eat 10,000 calories in a day and then try to burn the 10,000 calories the same day. And if you haven't seen them, I highly recommend you to watch some of them, as it will show you how bad of an idea it is to try to out cardio a bad diet. As I promised at the start of the video, I'm gonna tell you some tips that will make your cutting phase way easier. Tip number one. Start eating low calorie, high volume foods. Stuff like spinach and zucchini are a lifesaver when it comes to dieting. 
because the high volume, low calorie foods will be highly satiating so you are less likely to feel hungry or binge something unhealthy. Tip number 2. Keep your protein intake high, as it will help you to prevent muscle loss and protein is also very satiating. Tip number 3. Don't buy junk food. If you know that you have some junk food at home, it's just a matter of time before you have a weak moment and just completely binge on the full bag of some high calorie snack. If you don't have it at home, then you just simply can't cheat. Tip number 4. Weigh yourself every day in the morning. If you weigh yourself only like once per week, it might not be accurately representing your current weight due to water fluctuations and stuff like that. So by weighing yourself every day and writing down the number each day, you can then average out the real weight at the end of the week. This will give you a more accurate number in the long run. Tip number 5. Track your protein intake. This might seem simple and you might think you are hitting your protein no problem. But when you actually count it, you find out that you are missing out. So don't sleep on the simple things. Tip number 6. Have most of your carbs before and after your workout. If you are really deep in a cut and your energy levels are very low, you want to utilize your carbs to give you as much energy for your workout as possible. Yeah, buddy. Gotta get deep, baby. So you can perform your best. And after your workout, carbs are also important especially for replenishing your glycogen stores. Tip number 7. Be patient. It's gonna take time for you to lose a significant amount of weight. So stick to what you have learned in this video and you will get there over time. Just don't give up. Tip number 8. Avoid liquid calories. This is the exact opposite of bulking. When you are cutting, you don't want to consume your calories in a liquid form and you will be hungry way faster than if you consumed a proper non-liquid meal. Tip number 9. Caffeine timing. Caffeine can be a great tool for weight loss. If you use it in the right way. Caffeine has appetite suppressing effects, so you might want to reserve your caffeine for when you feel really hungry. Either coffee or energy drinks can work just fine. But remember, no liquid calories, so go for sugar free versions. Tip number 10. Eat a good amount of fiber. Fiber is very satiating, so you will feel satisfied after your meal. Plus, it will help your digestion. That's all I got for you. Now you know everything that you need to start your weight loss journey. If you have any more questions on the topic, ask them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and if you learned something, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to learn more stuff in a simplified way, Check out the playlists on the screen right now. Thanks!